Shin Master Hunters. As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them. So Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Arugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Perusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Arugia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it! Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Arugian army. With the capital under our control, Arugia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatched from the Ocean Army. 
The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erosian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. Will image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. That's something I'll never get used to. But tonight has been a total shock. Squadron's IDs. Oh, and uh, hand me that sandwich. It's a Russia! Shoot it down! Trigger! That one's Ocean! Do not attack before target identification is complete. This is a mission. So you are the ones on the radio. We don't know our location. Give us orders. We have no orders, but we do have ID data. Check your tap terminal. Roger that. We'll look for our way home. Entering the Anchorhead Bay area. Buildings will block your line of sight. Make sure to keep track of your objective. How this war ends depends on this mission. I'm counting on you. Understood. Strider Squadron, identify the unknowns along the route.
should be taking responsibility for the capital's fall, but instead they're prolonging the war. That is why proper conservatives like myself are moving to regain control. All goes well. We should be able to sign a truce with Rusia quickly. We've reached the rendezvous point. There's the chopper too. Oh, crap. 
aircraft are drones. They are currently being operated autonomously. They are not being controlled by anyone. They are flying on their own volition. What? In that case, we have no choice but to shoot the aircraft down. Unfortunately, yes. We did what we could. Weapons free. You are cleared to attack the escort. Welcome. Understood. Welcome. Can't afford the MQ-99 launch! Our commands are overridden! They must be accessing it remotely. Which unit is behind this? Hey, it's not our fault they won't listen to reason. Why well, build something like that? Whoever did is the king of all dumbasses. Additional hostiles inbound. Great timing. Son of a bitch. Helicopters flying safely outside Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh?
In order to respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too, once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying. The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there, so now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat, making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an Erujian liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and I shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave, about working together for peace. I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. Watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp, 
She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erusian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians, so we're getting zip from mission command about our orders. Still, with countless erosion forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. So much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want to do. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erusion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Pick a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind.
Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. Missile. 
Any second, Longcaster. We do have to leave our boys to die. Understood. Missile. Missile. All aircraft, Missile. search every nook of the Missile. island. We're not leaving anyone behind. Missile. 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 Bring the anti-tank missile. Take that heavy armor at the front line. No stop! Strider 1, missile launched. Three strike craft? Hi, shit. Need fan. Don't pursue too deep. We just need to buy some time. We're in the bay until Operation Feeding Time. Move them away from the mass driver. Ambush, stay calm. Reform the ranks. It's fine if we take a little damage. We need to finish this fight now. Strider 1, target destroyed. Behind the enemy. 
Vehicle. Vehicle. Bombers approaching. Intercept them now.
minutes remaining. Target acquired. Strider 1, target eliminated.
Three minutes to the Mipple. enemy's air defense network. Mipple. Mipple. All aircraft, remain on high alert. Mipple. We got bandits in coming on radar. Mipple. You're gonna have to forget Mipple. about it for now. Focus on destroying the supply ship first. We're sitting ducks like this. If we let the supply ship get too far away, we'll never be able to catch it. The supply ship's in the clouds. We can't find it. I'm usually pretty good at playing tag, but these guys have a head start. Two minutes to the enemy's air defense network. We're still in this. The supply ships are on their scheduled flight path. Strata 1, target acquired. 90 seconds to the enemy's air defense network. Don't lose them! Like that's one of them down. Mipple. Remember, there are two supply Mipple. ships out there. Hurry up and shoot Mipple. the other one down. Mipple. We've recalculated the remaining time. 60 seconds remain. If we're too close, we'll get caught up in the explosion. The supply ships are too far away. We'll never catch them at this rate. The missile hit the supply ship head on. Enjoying the pretty fireworks. This thing had any windows, we could have seen it for ourselves. Nice work, team. We're gonna find ourselves a boat and leave this island. We'll be taking the refugees, along with any deserters from the Russian military. Who's the girl that ran at the tanks with the smoke canister? A few more crazies like her, and life down there may have been a tad bit easier. What do you think would have happened to those refugees if you hadn't intervened? The princess saw what happened. They were little kids. That's why I like the sky. You don't have to see those types of things. Does this mean we're that much closer to ending the war? No, we just basically prevented it from going on forever. Count's right. We have no choice but to return to our original base. Our base that is nearly out of food and fuel. We need to do something. Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. 